The big question is, when there are so many peaks around the world open for mountaineers to climb, why insist on conquering a peak that is considered a sin to climb as per the religious beliefs of a large number of people? The Shiv Purana describes Mount Kailash as the abode of Lord Shiva. And the sacred mountain stands impossible to climb and invincible to date. Why has the Kailash mountain standing at a height of 21,837 feet not been climbed yet, despite numerous attempts by world's most accomplished mountaineers? When at the same time, several other mountains, much higher than the Kailash, have been conquered multiple times. Why do mountaineers who spend months preparing for the trek still get lost on the way to the summit? How does the weather change so drastically in the blink of an eye? And what force leads trekkers in the wrong direction? Perhaps the mystery of the Kailash mountain is an answer in itself that to touch and step on the mountain, only professional skill and passion is not enough but also a holy and pure soul is necessary. Let us then explore the story of Mount Kailash and how it has remained above and beyond human capability. Many people believe that only the Hindu scriptures consider Mount Kailash a sacred mountain. Interestingly, however, the Jain, the Sikh and the Buddhist religions also consider Mount Kailash holy. For example, in Jainism, Mount Kailash is called Ashtapad, where the first Tirthankar, Rishabh Devji, attained salvation. Buddhists believe that one of the avatars of Lord Buddha attained Nirvana from Mount Kailash. Mount Kailash finds mention in Sikhism too. This is where, at the banks of the Manas Sarovar Lake, next to Mount Kailash, Guru Nanak Dev Ji had his discourses with the Siddhs. Guru Arjun Dev Ji collected Guru Nanak Dev Ji's accounts of these meetings and included it in the Siddh Ghosh section of Sri Guru Granth Sahib where it is enshrined in pages 938 to 946. Hinduism considers the mountain to be the abode of Shiva and Parvati. According to multiple faiths, there are supernatural powers on Mount Kailash, which is why many saints and ascetics still come here to perform penance and attain enlightenment. Many scientists and experts worldwide have made numerous unsuccessful attempts to unravel the mystery of Mount Kailash. However, no one has been able to prove their theory conclusively to date. In Tibet, it is believed that the monk Milarepa, who propagated the teachings of Buddhism, was one of the very few who successfully climbed Mount Kailash. Milarepa returned and told the people of Tibet that Mount Kailash is an extremely sacred and mysterious place and that no one should ever attempt to climb it. These are matters of faith. But to understand just how mysterious Mount Kailash really is, we need to listen to the account of those who attempted to climb the mountain. Some years ago, something unbelievable happened with a team of Siberian mountaineers. 
Once they reached a certain point while attempting to climb the Mount Kailash, they found that they had rapidly aged by several years. As a result, they had to abandon their climb and return home. Astonishingly, these much younger climbers before their ascent died of old age after they returned from the mountain. In fact, some people believe that after a certain height, the air surrounding Kailash Parbat hastens the aging process. Skeptics will say that the power to think and understand diminishes at such a height due to lack of oxygen. However, other mountaineers who have climbed peaks even higher than Mount Kailash have not experienced such effects on other mountains. In 1926, the English mountaineer Hugh Rutledge dedicated considerable amount of time studying north face of Kailash Parbat, but ultimately concluded that it was impossible to climb. After extensive research, Rutledge focused on the northeast ridge of Kailash Parbat as a potential ascent route. But due to the onset of the Tibetan winter, he had to abandon his plans. He never had another opportunity to climb Kailash Parbat. During the same expedition, Colonel R.C. Wilson, who was with Hugh Rutledge, also explored the potential of climbing Kailash Mountain from the southeast ridge. Wilson was accompanied by a Sherpa named Tetsen, who was optimistic about their chances of scaling Kailash Parbat from that side. However, just as they had found a straightforward path to the summit, their plans were thwarted by heavy snowfall. A piece of advice that deepens the mysteries and legends around Mount Kailash was apparently given in 1936 by the governor of Western Tibet to Herbert Tichy a famous mountaineer, geologist, journalist, and author from Austria. On hearing about his plans to scale the mountain, the governor stated that only a person completely free of sin would be able to climb Kailash. A similar thought is echoed by Italian mountaineer Reinhold Messiner. He refused to climb Mount Kailash, stating that the mountain was sacred. He said, if we conquer this mountain, then we conquer something in people's souls. I would suggest they go and climb something taller and something harder. Kailash is not so high and not so hard. Incidentally, Messner is among the first few who climbed Mount Everest without supplemental oxygen. He also became the first to climb all 14 of world's highest peaks. Amidst countless efforts and failures, the Chinese government has now banned climbing Mount Kailash. So, the mystery of Mount Kailash remains unresolved today, as it was hundreds of years ago. Mount Kailash is not just the center of faith and belief for countless people, but also the center of this world. This beautiful poem showcasing sanctity of Mount Kailash says a lot. वह अटल खड़ा है उत्तर में शिखरों पर उसके हिमकिरीट साक्षी विनाश निर्माणों का उसने सब देखी हार जीत उसके सन्मुख जाने कितने इतिहास यहां पर रचे गए जाने कितने आगे आए कितने अतीत में चले गए